Howdy, howdy. Captain 315 here. Uh, TikTok. Scotty Andrew 315. Today we are going to go over an option for your Briggs opposed twin fans that are out there. Oh, I got a little hangover. Ooh, Turkey Day was rough. Anyhow, let's get into the brass tacks here. Uh, Kohler 27 horse V twin, Kohler Command carburetor. Uh, Command Pro, I think they called it. This has an accelerator pump on it. And I need to give credit to Tom Creepy Crawler for this uh, this suggestion. If you are into the off-road tractors, which you probably are if you're tuned in watching this right now, you know who Creepy Crawler is. He's at the top of his game. Um, and when I was building my opposed twin, looking at carb options, I was going to modify a stock carburetor. And we all know that the stock opposed twin carburetors are garbage. So he says, why not put a why not put a Kohler Command pumper carb on it? I didn't even know they existed. So folks, when they you hear people talk about a pumper carb, it's an accelerator pump like an automotive carburetor would have. So basically you've got this diaphragm down here and this is hooked to your throttle linkage. So when you work the throttle, it works a little diaphragm down in here and pumps fuel out of a little squirter tube here in the center of the carb. It's just better low end throttle response. Uh, you don't get the big holes and bogs in them and stuff. And uh, what I found with this carburetor is, although it was a huge improvement over a stock Briggs carb right out of the box, it needs a few modifications and it, and it leaves a few things on the table that we need to address if we want something that's really gonna work well. Uh, first thing we're gonna go into, I'm not gonna get into all the details, but obviously, the bolt pattern for this carburetor is huge compared to the Briggs one. Um, it is also offset a little bit, so keep this in mind. You can see that the throttle bore is offset a little bit. Uh, adapter plate. I'm just using half-inch aluminum. I've made a couple of them. Uh, they're a little time-consuming, but we're not going to get into that. You can make these. You're going to take your Briggs gasket. You're going to set your Briggs gasket, you know, bore your hole in the center. To match your butterfly here your your throttle bore i want to say it's like an inch 250 or inch 150 uh, regardless a little bit bigger is fine smaller is not you'll hang up your throttle on it uh, and you're going to set your set your piece of aluminum on your briggs intake with your gasket and make your mark and then make your mark at whatever position you want to mount this carburetor uh, i've got it set up so that it so that this carburetor sits straight it doesn't sit on an angle like the opposed twin intake manifolds do um, so we're going to skip that. It's pretty self-explanatory. Take this carburetor and make it bolt onto your Briggs one. Uh, the height of the spacer does not matter, but the taller you make the spacer, it will make a little bit more, uh, uh, a little more power. Probably nothing that you're going to feel and be like, wow. Okay, so let's tear this carburetor apart and I'm going to show you what we're going to do for mods on this thing. I don't know how to edit videos and... I hope when I get done with this is somebody can tell me how to do that and either combine two into one or there's going to be a lot of uh, speeding up and a lot of standing around waiting for me to do this. So we're going to get this down and then I'll show you what we're doing. We'll go ahead and tear it apart. Okay, let's go to the first mod that you need to do. Because if you don't do this, your tractor is not even going to start, period. These are a newer carburetor. So they have the anti-backfire valve on them. Anti-flood valve, whatever you want to call it. And it's basically hooked to your ignition. And when you turn the key on, this little thing goes doop and pops away from the main jet. When you shut the key off, that thing pops out and actually blocks your main jet. Obviously, if you're not running power to this, you have no way to control that. So what we're going to do is just take a pair of needle nose and snip it off 
doesn't matter how far you cut it, you know, at least a quarter of an inch, you can cut the whole thing off, whatever you want to do, and bolt it back on. I usually cut this wire off just to make it a little neater looking and bolt it back on. That's going to be one of the mods. The other mod I want to show you, first I'm going to show you how these accelerator pumps work, okay? You have a passage. Let's see if we can get it squared up here. There's a passage down in here that leads over to this accelerator pump chamber. You can see your little diaphragm right there. Okay. The upper side of this has no fuel on it. The lower side does. So if you look, there's a little tiny baby hole right here. Okay, what that is doing is when you push this diaphragm down, it makes a vacuum or makes a pressure. Okay, it's like a little check valve. I'm probably adding a ton of confusion here, but it's pushing down into this chamber, which is going to force fuel up out of this passage here, up through the top. It's going to come out right here. And that is going to attach, that's going to line up to, geez, if I can even find it here, right here on the front of your car where the little O-ring is. And it's going to come out this little squirter hole <clears throat> right here. That's your accelerator pump shooter. The problem is, is there's no real check valve in this system. Uh, it would work just like a fuel pump. When you pull a vacuum, it's going to shut one side off and open the other side. And when you push down, it's gonna open the other side and shut the other side. Does it make sense? It's a check valve, okay? The problem is they are relying on this tiny ass little hole right here to pull fuel into this chamber to pump out. I think what they were doing here is to keep it simple. They basically made that hole, the, the inlet hole smaller than the outlet. So when you hit the accelerator and open it up, it is obviously going to favor the larger hole and go out the top and into the engine versus back feeding through there. I found that it doesn't work because in these off-road situations, we're on and off the gas all the time. It can't fill that chamber back up. And what I was running into was a lot of stumbles and coughs and spitbacks and everything else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open that hole up. Um... I want to say 60 or 70 thousandths of an inch. So you're going to need a little pin vise drill kit. You can get them on the jungle site or, or uh, flea bay. I want to say that they're 10 or 12 bucks. They're not a big deal. But then because I do that, I'm going to have to have a check valve in here. So I'm going to go to the pump cover where this happens. And I'll show you how we're going to set that up. Um, other modifications let's see we covered this i told you what you got to do there just snip that off and send it we're going to get into the pump itself the mods um and then i'm going to show you what we got to do to extend the float bowl vents a little bit higher so that you don't get fuel sloshing and, and uh stalling your engine out flooding it out so let's uh shut this down and hopefully somebody's going to be able to tell me how to combine two videos i'm going to do these mods and then we'll sign right back in continue from there okay folks and we're back modifications are done uh i really don't have a good way to explain if you're unsure of how these check valves and and stuff work uh best thing to do since i'm not very good at explaining it is to uh search on youtube or even on the the interwebs and uh just look how check valves work and how fuel pumps work they all have the same uh basic design uh, that would probably be the easiest but so what I've done is I've enlarged this hole remember this is the hole that actually feeds from the float bowl to fill up this chamber with fuel that would actually be on the upper side of this chamber okay now what we're going to do obviously we can't just leave that hole open because then when you when you step on the accelerator it's just going to pump the fuel backwards back into the bowl it's not going to go out the top so we have to stop that what I've got right here, if you can see it, is a 90 thousandths piece of uh, steel shot. It's just 
shotgun pellets, basically. And this is not going to be fun to do. But I'm trying to show you all here. All right, basically, that is going to sit on top of that little hole that I just drilled. Okay, the other side of it is going to go in your pump cover. And that's something I didn't mention. You got to get the right passage, obviously, that corresponds with it when the cover's on there. You're going to want to drill that out a little bit larger than your steel shot so that that ball can actually lift up and, and get off of the seat in the carburetor. Just going to drop that ball in there like that. You can see it down in there, kind of. What it's, what's going to happen is that ball is just going to float around in there, okay? But when you step on the accelerator, instead of being able to push fuel back into the into the float bowl, it's going to try to push that ball down the pipe, but it's going to stop right there. And it's going to, for the most part, seal it up. This isn't precision stuff. We're playing with mowers here. But that will seal it up, and it's not going to allow the fuel to go backwards, so it's going to have to go the other way, and it's going to come out your, your pump shooter in the top of the carburetor. When you release the throttle and that diaphragm picks back up, it's going to unseat that ball from the force of the fuel. The vacuum is forcing the fuel. It's going to want to fill it back up, and it will lift that ball off of that seat and set it up inside that recess. Does that make more sense to you? All right. Um, everything else on this carb, I mean, I don't think there's any sense of me reassembling it. If you've gotten this far, you know how to take a carburetor apart and put it back together. Uh, a couple words of caution. There are little O-rings all through these carburetors. Basically, just pay attention and go slow and easy taking this thing apart. There's going to be an O-ring on the outlet side of the pump that goes in the carburetor body. The inlet side of the pump, where the little ball is now, that O-ring goes in that part of the carburetor. Where your accelerator pump comes up through, there's another O-ring right here by your inlet on your float chamber. There are just, they're everywhere, so pay very close attention. Um... Another thing I wanted to talk about, because everybody's going to say jetting. Well, if you happen to follow my Yamaha outboard carburetor uh, uh, thing, I little thing I did there. On, man, I cannot speak this morning. Anyhow, your main jet's in there. Okay, right now I have found no reason to change this main jet. My 18 horse is very heavily ported with a lot of head work and everything, but it's stock camshaft. Um, it's got a pretty good boost in compression. I have found no need to run a bigger main jet. Uh, I'm going to make this real quick and easy because this is a very common misconception with a carburetor. If you've got a carburetor, it's too big. This You hear a lot of this with the guys with the V8s and stuff. Oh, i got a 750 Holly on my little uh, 283 Chevy. It's too much carburetor, so I'm just going to jet it down. It doesn't work that way. Okay, well, I'm putting this carburetor, I'm taking it off my 350 Chevy, and I'm putting it on a 454. Kind of like what we're doing here, putting a 27 horse carburetor, V twin carburetor on a little 18 horse flathead. Okay, I'll, I'm, I'm just it's a bigger carburetor, so I'll just jet it down for the for the the smaller engine. Doesn't work. You can't not jetting up. You're not jetting down. If you got to change your jet sizes more than you know a, a few thousandths of an inch, you might have an issue somewhere with something. Um, why does it? Why is that the case? Okay, well, you see the size of the Venturi in this carburetor, okay? Your Venturi is your is your your pinch in the carburetor. It, it's smaller than the rest of the carburetor. That's basically going to make a vacuum. And I'm trying to keep this as simple as I can. And that's what causes fuel to come out of the main nozzle is because of the Venturi, okay? If this carburetor is on belongs on a 27-horse V-twin, right, that's got to pull a lot of air through that hole in that carburetor correct okay if we put this on an 18 horse if we put it on a 10 horse it's a smaller engine right it's not going to pull as hard on that right well if it's not pulling as much air through that venturi it's not pulling as much fuel either so you could for all intents and purposes you could make an adapter and bolt this carburetor on a v8 no kidding and you wouldn't have to do any jet changes chances are it's probably not going to run uh, more than about a thousand RPM because it just can't pull a, enough air through that. Okay. 
I know I'm being a little extreme here, to, but does that make sense? So you put it, you know, within reason, bigger carburetor, smaller carburetor from lawnmower engines to V8s. All right. If, if it's over carbureted or under carbureted, it's, it's going to work fine. You may have to make a small adjustment, but not a big one. So for instance, there you go. This is a, obviously a EPA emissions type carburetor because it's a newer one. So they've got probably got that 27 horse a little bit on the lean side. It works just fine on the 18. I have had no lean burn issues. I've had no overly rich issues. Um, just go for it. Send it. Stop worrying about the main jet. Uh, idle is easy. The, these actually have a idle mixture screw right next to where your main jet will be. So that's that's easy. If it seems to idle a little bit lean or a little bit rich, you can play with that screw and you can do whatever you want with it. Um, leave everything else alone. Leave your float level alone. Uh, these carburetors, when you start bouncing around in an off-road situation with a lawnmower, not designed for that, they tend to, they can flood out. They'll puke fuel over the top of the carburetor and guys will say, well, just lower the float level. Well, that normally works, but the problem with these is your main jet's right here. This is your main jet location where it's getting its fuel in the, in the float chamber, okay? That carburetor is sitting on your engine, let's see, like this, okay? That's sitting level. When you're going up a hill, there's plenty of fuel over that. When you're going down a hill, the fuel is going to run away from that, okay? So if you lower your float level way down, you're going down a hill, you may uncover that main jet. And if you do, it's going to quit. If you go on a hard left, you're going to be fine. If you go on a hard right, you could get fuel away from that main jet too. If you're on a hard right on a downhill, uh, you're going to be in trouble if you lower the float level. So unfortunately, that's a demon. We got to battle with this carburetor. Uh, I had a lot of issues with you start getting these stuttery bumps and the engine would just start flooding. And I mean, it just sounded radically bad. Um, that's what brought us to this. And it's just some eighth inch copper tubing like you would use for an automotive uh, um, uh, oil pressure line. These two holes in the top of the carburetor right here are your, your actual float bowl vents. You can see them up through the bottom there. Just take these and get a little JB epoxy or something and epoxy those in and cut them off maybe like an inch high, sticking up about an inch. That's what I've done uh, and it, it made a day and night difference. On super rough stuff, I'm still having a little bit of an issue. Um, it, it, I, and I can't nail it down to where if that's bouncing hard enough that that fuel level's getting so high, I highly doubt it's coming out of those copper tubes sticking up an inch above the carburetor. But it may be overfilling the chamber enough that the fuel is trying to push itself out of the main nozzle because I'll get this blip, 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 and it acts like it's kind of rich and then I'll step on the clutch and rev it up and it'll clean out and it's fine. Um, it's either that or it's my foot not realizing my foot is bouncing up and down on the throttle just a little bit, which is activating that accelerator pump and it could be loading it up. Uh, I'm going to be making some changes in the future, uh, but for right now, for all intents and purposes, this works excellent. Um, what I'm thinking about doing in the future is I may take where your bowl vents are and plugging those off and drilling a hole in the side and running the copper tube out each side right there and hooking a little piece of hose to it and running it down on the ground like an ATV carburetor. Then, yeah, you could spill a little bit of fuel, which we don't like doing that in the creeks and stuff anyhow. Um, so it's just something to keep in mind. One other mod I wanted to go over, I messed with this on mine, and I'm not really sure this could be part of the problem too. I didn't feel that this was wide open to closed, was enough pump stroke. Does that make sense? I took and I redrilled my pump arm and I put it up here further and then had to bend this rod a little bit. And basically you're, you're shortening, you're going from your, from your pivot point here, the further out you go, the less it's going to move. Well, I put this thing in about the middle and gave it maximum pump stroke. That might be another reason with my foot bobbling on it, um, that it's causing it to, to load up a little bit. So we're going to skip that mod for now and work on perfecting this part of it. Um, you could always, uh, check back in for updates. I recommend that you do. Uh, this is an awful lot of work. This might be more for somebody that likes to tinker and doesn't like to leave shit alone like me. Uh, a lot of you folks are out there are like that. Um, 
If you want to buy an ATV carburetor and make an adapter and bolt the thing on and go, by all means do it. But especially on the horizontal oppy twins, like I'm running and like a few other guys are running, if you start putting an adapter on there and then you're trying to run a different carburetor, number one, you got another 90 degree bend and these already have way too many bends from the carburetor to the cylinder head. Um, you're adding another bend. Uh, probably doesn't really make a huge difference, but keep in mind, the more you're putting bends, you're doing this, you're going to cause fuel issues. You can cause fuel issues and the carburetor is going to end up into the hood. Um, doing it this way, it, you've got it just like the factory carburetor. Obviously, you got a half inch spacer. You still can't run a real tall air cleaner on there because it's going to be against the hood on some models uh, on the wheel horses. You still got to run about a you know inch and a quarter tall filter with a drop base and everything else. We can get into that later. If you can get this far into a carburetor, you're building an off road tractor. You can find a way to make a base for the carburetor and get a filter on it. Um, I think that's about all I got for now. Uh, stay tuned. Please feel free to check back in. Maybe we can do some updates because I am very happy with this exact carburetor on my Oppie, but it's not 100% yet. Uh, every once in a while, it'll get a little stumble in it. Um, it. It's just, it's doing some wonky stuff, but I can still take it out and run it days on end. I mean, I've ran the thing all summer and haven't touched the carburetor. Uh, it just gets a little annoying once in a while in certain situations. It'll do something weird. Um, still eons ahead of the factory Briggs carburetor. Take that thing off, throw it in the garbage can. And as an extra boost, a little bonus, the Venturi in this, I wish I had another stock Briggs carb to show you. Uh, the Venturi is much larger, even though your base of your carburetor right here is just a slight, slight amount bigger. That bigger Venturi, this carburetor alone, I'm just going to take a wild guess. You're probably worth another two or three horsepower just with this carburetor. And it's got nothing to do with anything but that Venturi size, letting more air in. Stay tuned, folks.